Welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, Paige Wetzel says she didn't cry, but the shock of the news left her speechless. Her husband had been seriously hurt in Afghanistan. Just how seriously? Take a look. In May 2012, Paige Wetzel received the kind of call that every military wife dreads. Her Army soldier husband, Josh, had stepped on an improvised explosive device while patrolling in Afghanistan. Josh's profound injuries included the loss of both legs, two broken arms, a broken vertebrae, and a traumatic brain injury. Their new book, Beautifully Broken, takes us on their journey through devastation and reveals how God made them whole again. Paige and Josh are joining us now via Skype. Guys, welcome to the 700 Club. Thanks for having us. Well, Josh, you were on patrol in Afghanistan. What do you remember about that day? Uh, I actually remember the entire thing. Um, you know, we were on a pretty, a, a multi-day clearing mission. And, um, you know, I was leading the patrol with the metal detector because our main threat was improvised explosive devices. And um, so basically my job was to find them with the metal detector and clear them. Um, and contrary to popular belief, I was pretty good at finding them. I was 33 and one. Mm. Um, the one got me. Um, but, um, you know, I can remember, you know, you know, stepping on it, flying through the air, wow. landing on the ground, and then thinking to myself, like, you know, I've got to figure out, you know, like how to calm my medic down because he was my best friend. And, um, you know, you can imagine watching your best friend get injured like that. Um, you know, you're going to be extra, you know, shaky. And so, um, you know, I just, all I could think about was how I could calm him down. Paige, what was it like when you got that phone call? Um, well, weeks leading up to his deployment, um, or I'm sorry, to his injury, the deployment had already been really rough. A lot of our friends had already been injured and um, were, you know, several people were getting taken um, to Kandahar for surgeries and things like that because of uh, you know, just IEDs or um, just small arms fire. And uh, we would get notified of those things. And so I was getting um, notifications of instances like that, you know, once a week. And so the odds were just kind of building against um, the people that hadn't been wounded yet. And so it was about 6.30 in the morning on May 31st when I just got a phone call from a strange number and I just, I just knew that's what it was. Um, and, um, so I, uh, I ignored it and I just thought, well, if it's important, they'll leave a voicemail mm -hmm. and then they left the voicemail and I listened to it and it was, um, someone from the department of the army, um, telling me to call them back. It was about the health status of my husband. And, um, when I called them back, um, I just didn't know, obviously, the extent of the injuries, and there was no guarantee that Josh was going to survive. He was just, you know, gravely wounded, and um, so they were reading off this list of injuries to me, and um, it was almost kind of like you you can hear what's being said, but I, I tell people all the time I felt like I was underwater, yeah. and I couldn't really process what was being said, um, and it was just so uh, shocking, but my biggest fear was the brain injury and believing that he was unconscious um, for uh, like when he got injured. And so I was um, thankful to learn that he was trying to calm his guys down. He actually wasn't unconscious and remembered the whole thing. And that really just, um, you know, just kind of his humor and his ability to still be who he was in that terrible moment really just kind of made me feel like, okay, you know, we can deal with everything else. Well, you guys spent the next two years at Walter Reed surrounded by other veterans and their families. What was that experience like for you, Josh? Um, you know, for me, it was, it was huge, honestly. Um, you know, we couldn't have been more blessed in that situation um, to be in a hospital with um, men and women that are going through the exact same thing that I was going through. And so um, that made the physical part of our recovery um, easy because I had somebody in, you know, in physical therapy all the time that that knew what I had gone through, but also knew how to push me. Um, and, you know, I'm, you know, when it came to that, you know, like I just, I was on a mission to to get better anyway. And I wanted 
you know, my guys that were back in Afghanistan to not have to worry about what was going on with me. And so, um, you know, that in, in that aspect, um, you know, we couldn't have been uh, more blessed. So the hard part really was after those two years, after you left Walter Reed and you wanted to jump back into normal life, uh, what happened then? Right. Um, you know, honestly, you know, in the military, you get, um, you know, the day you get in the military, it's just beat into your head from day one to always have a battle buddy. And, um, you know, that's somebody that's there to, you know, pick you up when you fall or to have your back when, when things get wild. And, um, you know, when I left the army, I kind of lost that and I lost my purpose a little bit. And on the outside, things were going great. You know, we moved to Auburn, um, Alabama, and I started to finish my degree at Auburn University and I graduated and everything. But on the inside, the devil was just isolating me further and further away from community and my family. And, um, you know, I was getting in a really dark place because I had lost that that sense of community and that sense of service. And, um, you know, honestly, I just so thankful for my amazing wife, you know, who actually tricked me into going into a small group um, at our church and, and finding that community and realizing that, you know, I had an extreme fear to lead after my injury because, you know, when I, when I got injured, I was leading. And so, you know, I, I, you know, when I was leading, I got injured and then others subsequently got injured or killed. And so, I just didn't want to lead in any aspect of my life, whether that was spiritually, in my family, you know, at work. I didn't even want to be the the leader in a line going anywhere. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm so thankful for my wife and um, everything that she did and sticking by my side through some really hard times. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, it was huge to find community again once I got out of the middle. Well, there's so much more to your all story. And I know that there was a time where the marriage got really rocky, uh, but God worked all that out for you guys. It's all in your new book called Beautifully Broken. I love this cover so much. It's absolutely gorgeous. An Unlikely Journey of, of Faith by Paige and Joss Wetzel. Order this book right now. You will be so blessed. It's Veterans Day. Let's support our veterans. Let's support Paige and Josh. Thank you for your service. Thank you for sharing your story. And God bless you both. What a Thank you.